So there's a reason why the English language became the language of business throughout the world. And that's because it's the easiest language to lie in. My mom doesn't speak Navajo. My mom grew up in a Methodist boarding school. And uh, in fact, I'm the first generation in my family not to go to boarding school. And, and most people in New Mexico, well, most people anywhere, they don't understand that when the Spanish came, they didn't bring any women. They literally raped their way through the Southwest. They would buy and sell indigenous slaves, mainly young girls. So the church would get the girls. The church was the broker. So this is the uh, MFA um, graduation exhibit, Beyond Mastery. Class of 2023, IAI. This is the very first uh, Masters of Fine Arts and Studio Arts for the Institute of American Indian Arts. They have a Masters of Fine Arts in writing that's 10 years old, but this is the first year for this program. And so uh, I started my master's over 20 years ago at New Mexico State, but then life happened and I decided to raise my kids instead of finishing school. And then uh, when my former wife and my son passed away, it kind of was like this, uh, I don't know how to explain it, it serendipity it just happened to happen at the right time. And I figured, well, I'm gonna finish what I started. One thing that I, in my research and listening to people in my cohort through our, uh, through our critiques and everything that I came to understand was, so there's a reason why the English language became the language of business throughout the world. And that's because it's the easiest language to lie in. It doesn't, it doesn't have, it leaves a lot of things wide open for interpretation. So you can say something, you can infer something, but then it doesn't necessarily have legal standing, if you will. Whereas like a lot of indigenous languages, they're very specific, they're very emotional and how you say things, you, you have to own what you're saying. So it's, it makes it much more difficult to be disingenuous in a lot of indigenous languages. So it, 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 I find it interesting. And then my uh, installation is this one here. I have uh, four films. Um, this one on the left that's just getting ready to start, this is Grandma Said. And what it is, is it's a collection of what I call nuggets of knowledge. Uh, things that I've heard my mom, my grandmother, people say to my girls, other women in my family, kids. And if you stand under this speaker, you can hear it when it starts. And so that one's in English. Is that your daughter? Mm -hmm. Everybody in this film is a relative. So even the old film was my third great-grandmother. That's Chaco Canyon, that's where I grew up. So that, this film, Grandma said, is in English. And when I made this film, I, uh, I thought it was interesting because uh, my mom doesn't speak Navajo. My mom grew up in a Methodist boarding school. And uh, in fact, I'm the first generation in my family not to go to boarding school. And, but when I was born, Navajo was my first language, but I don't speak Navajo now, which is a weird thing. So there was this, I made this film, but then I realized, you know, I was giving voice to my mother and I'm giving voice to my daughters because they're carrying on these concepts, ideas, traditions and everything, right? But, but what I grew up hearing is this, if you go on this side. So this is Grandma Says in Diné, in Navajo. So it's the same, it's the same message, but in a different language. And because the language is different, and because the language meant something different to me, the imagery is different. It, it's, it's kind of challenging for me to explain to some people, because... Uh, 
when I first did it, a lot of people wanted to know why I didn't just overlay the Navajo on top of the, the depictions of my daughters and everything. And I was like, because in my brain it doesn't, it doesn't jive. And then this film is, uh, is called Mantanza. And uh, it, is a, uh, it is a film uh, about the Geneseo of New Mexico. Um, so where I live in the South Valley, when I first moved there, the very first person to come to my house and welcome me to the valley was a guy named Larry Ortiz. And when he passed away, his daughter had a Montanza, and this was the last pig that Larry raised. We ate the last pig that he raised, and he used to have Montanzas all the time. And um, he was always bringing people together and everything. And so what you see people doing is all, it's all, you know, it's 400 years of tradition because the pig came with the Spanish being passed from generation to generation. And, and most people in New Mexico, well, most people anywhere, they don't understand that when the Spanish came, they didn't bring any women. They literally raped their way through the Southwest. And what they would do is they would, they would buy and sell indigenous slaves, mainly young girls. So the church would get the girls. They would keep, the church was the broker. And then they would sell the girls to the men and the descendants of those girls would then be would then be baptized as Catholic. So now they were human, because according to the Doctrine of Discovery, there were no humans here. And so, the vast majority of the of the of people in New Mexico that refer to themselves typically as Hispanic are Geneseo. They're the descendants of those people. And so right now, there's a great big. Uh, there's a, in, in fact, in 2017, the state of New Mexico recognized the Geneseo population as indigenous people. So the, the thing that makes it complicated politically is they, they, are, uh, they don't know their tribes because their tribes were erased, their languages were erased, all of that. But most of these people still know that they're from descendant ancestry. And so when you do their DNA test, they test, you know, at least 40% indigenous blood. So it's a very complicated thing. Well, I, this film appealed to me, and one of the reasons why I started it was because I made this film first, before I made that one, the Grandma Said one. And, and in this film, you see a uh, black and white picture of Juanita and her daughters and, and their children um, at Tohatchi. And uh, so I'm a descendant of Manuelito and Juanita, well, there's all these debates about who she was, where she was from, nobody can agree and everything. But our clan is Kluga, and we're the only clan that goes back to one woman. It goes back to one lady, right? What was the clan? Kluga. What does it translate to? So there's three translations, Zia, Hairy Ones, and Weavers. So they can't even agree on what it means. But here's the irony. So my mom's a molecular biologist and organic chemist. We grew up raising cattle and horses. My granddad raised world champion court horse. So we're all about DNA and breeding better horses and everything, right? So my mom is always like, DNA doesn't lie. So I said, all right, I'm gonna get my DNA tested. So I get my DNA tested, right? Because my mom has a relative who wrote a book about Manuelito and Juanita that caused some controversy in our family. But that's a mute point. I get my DNA tested, my mitochondrial DNA, which is your mother's side, right? goes back to Peru. Essentially what that means is Juanita would have been Peruvian. So my mom loved this because nobody in our family was silversmiths or goldsmiths or anything like that until me. And she was like, well, no wonder you're so good with metal. It's in your DNA, you know, because the Incas were goldsmiths and all this and everything. So she got a kick out of it. But so now it's kind of funny because my mom's DNA shows the same thing and everything, you know, because your mitochondrial DNA gets passed to every generation. Your, your uh, I can't remember what the male stuff is, but anyway, it's a whole different thing. And then my fourth film is this right here. So what this is, is this is a collection of uh, films. Well, it, it's a collection of sunrises and going into sunsets and it shows different things going on in my life and everything because I typically get up before the sun and I, and I walk nearly every day. 
but because my girls and I rope and rodeo and stuff, we spend a lot of time on the road. We're always moving, we're always, and, and it's funny because, um, how do I say this? We've always, like, the people that I come from, because I'm mixed heritage, so my, dad, my dad's side, you know, I have European heritage, where they moved across the ocean to get here, you know? But then even my people here were always moving. And this is sort of this weird illustration of that. And then I use this old stock tank that we have and everything because everything we do, like I grew up ranching here in the Southwest and uh, one thing I was always taught was we're not in the cow business, we're in the grass business. If you don't have any grass, you can't raise any cattle. So you always prayed for rain and you know, that was, that was the story of our life. So this stock tank is indicative of, you know, water is life. And especially here in the Southwest, you know, it's a, it's a such a rare commodity, you know, that, that um, I felt like it really tied it all together. But I did this installation this way. My, my ideal thing would, be, this would be round, sort of like a Hogan, you know, but I didn't have that option. They limited my budget. But if you stand right here in the middle of it, like as, as the viewer, if you stand here, you're, you're essentially standing in the, world, in the center of my universe. Because I have, you know, my, my day, water is life. I have the teachings of my mother being passed on to my children and her grandchildren. I have the teachings of my, of my grand, grandmothers being, that were passed on to me. And then I have where, I'm, where I live in the South Valley, which is a Hennessyo community, living with people that are maintaining and continuing these traditions that are hundreds, if not thousands of years old, despite not knowing what their tribal background is, despite not having their traditional languages and everything, they're still doing the things that they've always done, living off the land. And they know the land better than anyone else. And, and, it's, and it's funny because uh, they, like I said, Larry was the very first person to ever invite me to the South Valley. And it was just, my kids have grown up with his grandkids and all these other kids. It's like we have this whole extended family network that's, that's amazing. I went to the Santa Fe Symposium one time and there was a guy from Italy. They did all this research on jewelers. And so a jeweler's lifespan is sort of, you do this slow 20 year uphill climb where you're learning your craft, you're learning your techniques, you're learning all this stuff. And then you reach this plateau where you have the creativity, you have the technical knowledge, and you have the experience to make your dreams reality. If you're lucky, it lasts 10 years. And then it's like this drop, it just whoosh, drops off because your eyes go, your manual dexterity goes, because you're working with all these toxic things. A lot of people end up with health problems, cancer, all this stuff. And so because I was aware of this, because the Santa Fe Symposium where I learned that was like, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, I, I was already starting to restructure my life, aware that I wouldn't be able to do this forever. So when I started out as a jeweler, nobody would tell you nothing. Everything was a secret. And my thing is, is I, whatever I know, I want to make it available to everyone. I don't want to die with the knowledge in me. I want it to be out there. None of my kids want to be jewelers. So, so one of my things was I thought, well, if, if I do film, and this is why I love making films at Rio, it gets that information out and makes it available to the world because, I mean, just think of all of the stuff we've lost with all the people that were very secretive about their work. I mean, they went to their graves with knowledge that it'd take a hundred years to figure out what they, they could have taught us in 10 minutes. <laughs>